the third meeting of the Committee on Foreign Affairs of the Commission on Appointments in the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. The Secretary of the Commission is uh, directed to call the roll. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. The Committee on Foreign Affairs, Commission on Appointments, the Honorable Chairperson is present, Senator Panfilo M. Lakson. The other officers and members are Advincula, Almario, Alvarez Jr. Present. Cagas. Chepeco Jr. Drilon. Ferrer the Fourth. Heron. Go. Pontiveros. Present. Marcos. Present. Noel. Pancho. Present. Pimental the Third. Ramirez Sato, Revilla Jr., Tolentino, Villanueva, Villar, Present, Pamora, Present, Tobiri. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm present. This is graceful. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, and graceful are also recognized. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm also present. Congressman Chipeco. Congressman Chipeco is also recognized as present virtually. We, with the chair physically present and 11 members present online, the chair uh, declares the existence of a, of, a, of a quorum. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, what is the pleasure of uh, Congressman Almario, please. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes of our meeting held on December 9, 2020 and consider the same as approved. Is there any objection? There being none, the reading of the minutes of the meeting held on December 9, 2020 is dispensed with, and the same is considered approved. Today, the Committee on Foreign Affairs will deliberate on the nominations of two or, and the ad interim appointment of three officials of the Department of Foreign Affairs. All the nominees and appointees are physically present in today's deliberation. They are Leslie Muno Baja, Chief of Mission Class One, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Kingdom of Morocco, with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Guinea, Republic of Mali, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, and Republic of Senegal. Raymond Reyes Palatbat, Chief of Mission Class 2, as Ambassador for Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Lebanese Republic. Leandro Luis Sullivan Manantan, appointed as Foreign Service Officer Class 2. Secretary Villacorta report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements and other relevant information relative to the nominations and ad interim appointment of the three officials of the Department of Foreign Affairs in compliance with the rules or the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees. But before that, I, the Chair would like to recognize also the presence of Representative Monir Arbison, 2nd District of Sulu, cannot say sure, as uh, an incoming member. So, yes, Secretary Villaporta. 
Mr. Chairman, Your Honours, the nominees and appointee have complied with the submission of the necessary documentary requirements pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. Their nominations and ad interim appointment were referred by the Commission Chairperson, Senate President Vicente C. Soto III, to the Committee on Foreign Affairs, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. Likewise, their nominations were published on December 10, 2020, and the ad interim appointment was published on May 22, 2020, in Two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the new rules of the Standing Committees. The Commission Secretariat has not received any opposition against any of the nominees and appointee. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. The chair recognizes the presence of uh, Senator, the physical presence of Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, noting that the publication of the two nominations on December 10, 2020, lack one day pursuant to the seven day requirement as provided in Section 3, Article 2 of the rules of the standing committee before the committee concerned can commence consideration of any nomination or appointment, I move that the application of the said rule of the standing committees be suspended for the two nominations. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Secretary Villacorta kindly administer the oath to the nominees and the appointee. Please rise. Please rise and raise your right hands. Do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Mr. Chairman, the nominees and appointee are now under oath. Thank you. Ambassador Baha, kindly take the front seat. And you may now proceed uh, with your introductory statement, if any. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments. Um, I am Leslie Baha, currently the FA Assistant Secretary for Middle East and African Affairs. Uh, prior to my current position, I was Philippine Ambassador to Egypt uh, with concurrent jurisdiction over Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti from the years 2015 to 2018. And before that, I was also Philippine ambassador to Switzerland with um, concurrent jurisdiction over Liechtenstein from 2011 to 2015. I have held other positions in the DFA where I have been working for the past 34 years, sir. Under the um, leadership of Secretary Luxin, we have given importance to our bilateral relations with Africa. And since December 2019, we have reopened our embassy in Rabat, Morocco, and hopefully by next year, we'll be able to finally open our embassy in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Together with um, other agencies of government, we have endeavored to uh, intensify relations with these countries by concluding a number of bilateral agreements. And had the pandemic not occurred this year, we would have also uh, together with the Department of Trade and Industry opened or reopened or reopened a Philippine Trade and Investment Center in South Africa to further, to further intensify our economic relations with the African continent. Um, as a Philippine ambassador to Morocco and the four other countries under the jurisdiction of the Philippine embassy in Rabat, I will be guided by the three pillars of Philippine foreign policy, namely nurturing uh, political and security relations, expanding economic ties, and most certainly assuring the welfare, the promotion and protection of the welfare of Filipinos in these um, five countries. Mr. Chairman, um, distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, uh, as a career official who rose from the ranks, starting as a uh, 
casual employee in 1986 until I passed the exams in 1990. I uh, humbly request your kind confirmation of the nomination of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte as Ambassador to Morocco, Guinea, Mali, Mauritania, and Senegal. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. The nominees and the appointee are now ready to respond to comments or questions from the members. But before that, uh, the chair recognizes the presence of Representative Alex A.A. Advincula. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Tolentino is recognized. Morning. Morning, uh, Ambassador Baha. Uh, your your records would, would appear that uh, you have a vast experience coming from uh, with uh, Middle Eastern and African affairs con countries. And uh, I, while going to this uh, discussion, I, I happened to read the paper uh, involving uh, a certain Gambian. Uh, have you ever been assigned to Gambia, uh, Ambassador? No, sir. And uh, I have not been there as well. But with, with your... Uh, forthcoming assignment involved that uh, country as well? Sir, um, Gambia is currently under the jurisdiction of our embassy in Abuja, Nigeria. Sir. Uh, Nigeria. The reason I ask that, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that the, apparently the, uh, the International Criminal Court is making uh, news right now. And uh, the, the prosecutor in charge is from Gambia. And most of the members of the ICC are African countries as well. Uh, would your forthcoming posting uh, include a perhaps a personal and or official projection on what the real uh, human rights situation in the Philippines is? And uh, based on your personal knowledge, uh, since we are no longer a member of the ICC, uh, would would that Gambian special prosecutors? Uh, Discretion, if I quote unquote, if I may say, uh, in accordance with the Rome Statute, from your from your vast uh, diplomatic posting experience and wisdom, I, I ask that question, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Um, the ICC uh, uh, members and even the uh, the prosecutor act as independent, uh, in the act act independently of the the countries they come from. Now, um, in, to the best of my knowledge, sir, uh, most African countries would, uh, uh, at, there have been some cases where in some uh, leaders from some uh, African countries have been indicted by the ICC. But um, basically, most of the African countries, sir, have um, a very uh, kind understanding of the human rights situation in the Philippines, as can be gleaned from the the support that they have been giving us in the human rights councils in the past votes. So I believe that um, there is great understanding on our situation by the uh, African countries, and this will not necessarily be a reflection of whatever uh, um, their nationals who serve as independent um, members of uh, international treaty bodies would be doing. Thank you, sir. So that's a very uh, diplomatic and neutral answer. I hope uh, you'll be uh, giving some positive trade uh, upgrades uh, as regards uh, the Philippines and Morocco. And once you arrive, I'm familiar, some, somewhat familiar with the place. Once you arrive in that Morocco airport, you'll be very familiar with Tagalog speaking personnel because the duty free shop in Morocco is being handled by a Filipino corporation, uh, Mr. Ambassador. So good luck. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman, un unless uh, the other members would like to uh, posit questions as well. Thank you, sir. Before I recognize uh, Senator Marcos and Senator Diveros, the chair acknowledges the presence of Senator Ramon Bong, Revilla Jr. Welcome, sir. Senator Aimee, Marcos is recognized. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, to the good ambassador. 
Um, the Philippine Embassy has reopened in Morocco. I lived there for a while. And uh, I recall that in 2018, the U.S. State Department identified Morocco as a source destination of sex trafficking, as well as uh, forced labor or human slavery. It was also stated that some women in the Philippines uh, were recruited as domestic workers only to be forced into domestic servitude with non-payment of wages being asserted, withholding passports, physical abuse. Um, what uh, will you do as ambassador to address this situation? Thank you, Madam Senator. Um, uh, I have read that report, ma'am, um, but it is not endemic only to Morocco, unfortunately. Um, there have been instances in various Middle Eastern countries also, um, wherein um, some of our nationals uh, were recruited uh, purportedly to work in either a factory or a, an office, but ended up as um, uh, household service workers and um, were not able to receive the uh, the salaries that they were promised uh, before they left here. Um, together with the DFA's Office of uh, Migrant Workers and the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, we have been pushing for the uh, prevention of human trafficking to various countries, including Morocco, ma'am, because um, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a no visa regime with uh, that country, which um, uh, makes it easier for our nationals to be able to uh, enter the country. But even then, um, with some other countries wherein there is a visa regime, it is also, um, it is, there is also, there are make quite a number of cases wherein um, some of our nationals are trafficked. Um, we will certainly do our best, ma'am. Uh, it is, uh, we will be continuing to work with the uh, Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, including the Interagency Committee on Against Trafficking, and um, with the hope that our nationals will not be further exploited uh, as far as human trafficking is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. From and uh, work in uh, as we know, the Philippine Embassy in Rabat right has concurrent jurisdiction over Mali, and acts. our DFA it has raised your alert level to in Mali and, and instructed Filipinos to uh, restrict non essential movements. Are right there any updates in the Mali situation? And um, do we know what uh, the condition of the few Filipinos there are in Mali? Thank you, Madam uh, Senator. Um, the embassy in Rabat, as you rightly said, ma'am, is uh, continuing is continually to uh, monitor the uh, situation in Mali. Uh, the embassy's estimate is around um, 76 Filipinos working there in some companies. Uh, but um, the political situation is still um, shaky, if that's the right word. Uh, a transitional government is still in place, uh, but um, things have since um, um, stabilized, but uh, we have not re, uh, lowered the alert level so that um, we will be um, uh, uh, being, uh, so we can uh, assure the Filipinos that we are on top of the situation and that we are ready to assist them at a moment's notice. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. That will be all, Mr. Ambassador. And may I endorse the appointment of uh, Ambassador Leslie Baha for his unique and valuable expertise in Middle East and African affairs and his um, credence and uh, competence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sec uh, Senator Ami Marcos. Uh, Congress or uh, Senator Rizon Tiveros is recognized. And then uh, Senator Franklin Drillon. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. But uh, I yield to the uh, to our minority leader. I, I'll be content to follow his uh, interpellation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Delon. Is recognized. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, first, we would like to spread it to the record that we have known Ambassador Leslie Baha for quite a while, and we have known him to be a competent and a career diplomat who has always stood for the interest of our country in his various assignments, uh, particularly in areas where, the, uh, in, in Switzerland, for example, where it's basically a multilateral assignment, uh, 
and also in the other uh, in the other uh, postings that he had. Um, we also note that he started as a casual employee in the Department of Foreign Affairs way back in uh, 1986, and from there rose uh, in the ranks until today. We are uh, giving our consent to his uh, nomination as uh, ambassador to uh, Morocco. And uh, just uh, for, for, for the record, I uh, fully endorse uh, his confirmation, but we would like to ask a few questions for the record. We have always taken the position that uh, uh, in any posting, we must be able to justify our presence in that country, basically because of the presence of our overseas Filipino workers, one. Number two, uh, volume of trade with that particular country. And number three, the political significance of uh, the uh, country where the, the assignment is being made. So briefly, Mr. Ambassador, can you, can, can you spread into the record uh, the situation first of our overseas Filipino workers in Morocco, if there are? Thank you, Mr. Senator, and thank you for your kind words. Um, we have currently in Morocco about 4,600 Filipinos, sir. Um, most of them in the household service um, sector. Some are engineers, some are uh, um, tourism, working in the tourism sector. Um, in some, in the other areas under my jurisdiction, there are about 100 plus in Senegal, uh, as I said, I think 76 in Mauritania, 35 in uh, uh, Guinea, and um, 12 in Mauritania. Um, certainly, sir, um, the numbers might not be uh, that big in the other jurisdiction, but given the cir circumstances that are um, uh, these countries are currently in, the DFA thought it best that we reopen Morocco in order to be uh, closer and um, uh, to this uh, to our nationals and to be able to deliver faster any uh, necessary service that they would need. As far as economic relations, sir, um, I can um, tell you that um, with trade with Morocco in the last um, two to three years have gone up, although certainly not that big. The balance of trade is still in favor of the Philippines. But with the recent um, ratification by the 54 countries in Africa, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, we hope to be able to um, uh, 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 take that opportunity to be able to expand our trade, and we will certainly work together with the Department of Trade and Industry in um, doing so. Politically, uh, politically, uh, of course, uh, one cannot un um, underestimate the uh, the uh, our ties with Africa, as I said in my opening statement, um, we aimed to be, as uh, the president has said, friends to all. And so we would like to expand our presence in Africa. Um, we only right now have about six and hopefully we're able to open another one with, uh, with the concurrence of uh, uh, Congress in Ethiopia next year. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Yes. So, um, Mr. Ambassador, how many Filipino compatriots do we have uh, in Morocco? Sir, 4,603. What? How many? 600? I'm, I'm 4, sorry. 4,600, sir. 4,600. Uh, okay. Uh, are you aware of... Uh, problems in Morocco that must be especially addressed in so far as our OFWs are concerned, particularly on uh, um, welfare cases? Sir, as uh, earlier um, uh, stated by uh, Senator Marcos, um, there have been a, a few instances of human trafficking, um, but these are currently being addressed, as I uh, also said earlier, sir. Uh, by the DFA and together with the IACAT. And hopefully um, when the embassy is fully operational in Rabat, we will be able to further stem the tide of uh, trafficking. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, on the political uh, uh, end, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, Morocco 
up to now is active in the OIC. Is that uh, statement correct? The Organization of Islamic Conference? Well, sir, they're still a member of the OIC, sir, and they recently rejoined the African Union about two or three years ago, sir. Yes, and uh, did Morocco uh, play any role, uh, significant or not, in the peace process in Mindanao? Yes, sir, in the yeah. past, they were a member of the OIC Ministerial Committee, which um, uh, uh, participated in uh, the peace process in Mindanao. Okay. Now, finally, uh, in the field of economics, uh, you said that, uh, for the record again, what is our volume of trade uh, between the Philippines and uh, Morocco, say, in 2019 or whatever year it is available? Sir, um, our records, and hopefully they're right, sir, um, uh, state that we have a, a total trade with Morocco of about $19, $19 million. Um, Ten million dollars of our uh, our our exports and um, around eight million dollars are our imports from Morocco. So the balance of trade is with the Philippines. Um, would you have any plans on how to uh, improve and uh, improve this and, and, and enlarge this uh, two-way trade between Morocco and the Philippines, uh, in so far as our econo economic front is concerned? Certainly, sir, that is one of the um, uh, objectives of my assignment there. Um, I'll be uh, consulting with the Department of Trade and Industry, certainly on this, and uh, especially into the aspect of investments and not just trade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, yes, I wanted to ask those questions in order to uh, place on record uh, the key issues in your assignment to Morocco as uh, I said at the start, I have no, I have fully endorsed uh, 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 the confirmation of your ad interim appointment or uh, your nomination um, to as our Philippine ambassador to Morocco. And uh, thank you very much for your responses, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Senator Dillon. Before I recognize uh, Senator Peros, uh, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence online. Uh, of Secretary uh, Teddy Boyloxin, Jr. Uh, welcome, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if and uh, may I, am, am I on? Yes, please. Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, in this connection, I'd like to mention two things. One is I share Senator Drillon's um, conservative approach to opening uh, missions abroad. Uh, we are not a travel agency. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to certainly pursue that line of thinking. I'm going to see which embassies continue to have any relevance. But one of the important things about Morocco is that without mentioning any country in particular, it seems to be an area of great contention, Morocco being like an island of peace, and that in a pinch, we move operations to Morocco, should things get, get pretty bad. And also in that regard, I would like to thank um, uh, the Tantoko the family, uh, without any pay, without any consideration at all, they held the fort for the Philippines all these many, many, many years. Um, we, cannot thank, we cannot thank them enough, the Department of Foreign Affairs. I hope that we have not been rude to them uh, in, in suddenly shuttling them aside, but that happens in, in, you know, in bureaucracies. So um, um, again, I, I share uh, Secretary Drillon's uh, <clears throat> How shall I put this? He's already smiling. Uh, skepticism about many missions abroad. But, <laughs> and I will certainly look very carefully into it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, uh, Secretary uh, Um Just a quick interjection for the chair. Filipinos are granted uh, visa free entry to Morocco and they can stay for uh, continuously for 90 days. Is that still uh, the case? Just for the information of the members of the commission and those who may be interested to visit Morocco. Yes, sir. Ambassador. Still is. I, I would like Thank to you. refer Thank that to, to Ambassador Baha. Uh, uh, is it still he on? Already, he already replied, uh, Mr. Secretary. It's affirmative. 
Yes. Oh, it's affirmative. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, and we were there Senator. recently for the Global Thank Compact you. on Migration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. to your question. Yes, Senator Tolentino. The next uh, coming headache of the Golden Ambassador is how to uh, preserve that good, our good relationship with Spain. Because uh, from Morocco to the Strait of Gibraltar, going to the nearest uh, entry point in Spain, a lot of uh, undocumented Kababayans are, are trying to reach uh, Spain. So, uh, alam mo naman siguro yun. Tulungan na lang sila po. Yes, sir. Um, to the best of our ability, sir, and certainly we will. Thank you. Now, Senator Antiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, magandang umaga po, Ambassador. Magandang umaga rin kay Secretary Loxin. Um, Mr. Ambassador, uh, I note um, with greatest interest in your profile that as our ambassador to Switzerland and Liechtenstein, you were lauded for working on the passage of the Compensation Act for Human Rights Victims in February 2013, uh, under which 10 billion pesos uh, would be given to martial law victims as compensation. And I look forward, Ambassador, to, co to your continued uh, upholding of that fundamental value uh, of human rights uh, on behalf of our country on the world stage, uh, regardless of uh, the different administrations and each administration's view uh, about uh, this fundamental value. I also note, uh, Ambassador, that you were recognized for promoting the Mindanao peace process uh, at post in Switzerland uh, while she was chairing the, the Transitional Justice and Reconciliation uh, Commission. I thank you for your work so far uh, on these uh, or in these and other fields, Ambassador, and I look forward uh, to your continuing to do so uh, on behalf of the Philippines. So just a few questions, um, Ambassador, not about either of these um, uh, fields, but uh, as far as our Filipino domestic workers are concerned, and also a particular case of a Moroccan national here in the Philippines. So my first question, uh, Ambassador, what is the current status of our Filipino domestic workers in Morocco? And what kinds of programs and policies are in place in order to protect our kababayan from abuses and to uphold their labor rights, Mr. Chairman? Maraming salamat po, Madam Senator, and thank you for your mm -hmm. kind words. Um, I've almost forgotten them um, since they were a few years back. But uh, <laughs> going, back, going back to your question, um, we, the majority, as I said, the majority of the Filipinos in Morocco um, work in the households uh, service sector. Okay. Um, the embassy being newly reopened and currently manned by just two people are mm. doing is doing its best to um, assist the Filipinos currently under the um, limited um, manpower that they currently have. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of um, consular uh, actions, they have been doing outreach to um, mm -hmm. to all, most to all of the almost all of the Filipinos in Morocco, specifically in Casablanca, where the majority mm -hmm. of our nationals stay. Um, as far as uh, other um, uh, cases are concerned. We, as I said earlier, we're also um, in contact with the um, uh, the interagency committee uh, against trafficking and the DFA's uh, <laughs> office of undersecretary for migrant workers affairs. Mm -hmm. um, we're studying all the aspects of the um, of the situation of the Filipinos in uh, Morocco, ma'am. And certainly, um, once we have fully settled, we'll certainly update you on what um, programs we will undertake. But uh, um, certainly, it will um, be for the uh, general welfare of our kababayans in Morocco. With the permission of uh, Senator Tiberos. Yes, please, uh, Chairman. You mentioned the word Casablanca. Curious lang. Talaga ba sa Morocco na set yung field na Casablanca o sa Hollywood? Um, this be, this be, is an ongoing debate, ha? To be honest, sir, I was reading about it last night, but they I said it was in Morocco. <laughs> anyway, just a trivia question. Yes, and <laughs> Tony Peros, you may proceed. Nicole Thank P. you, Mr. Chairman. A delightful trivia question dahil maalala natin yung mga immortal words, di ba, na plate against Sam, here's looking at you, kid. So I guess... 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, the whole committee uh, joins the chair in uh, in wishing uh, the ambassador a very maaliwalas uh, posting uh, in that country. Uh, so, just to continue, Ambassador, thank you for your response to your responses to my first question. I would uh, appreciate um, the update that uh, the good ambassador said you would send uh, to this representation to our committee through our chairman, and I look forward to therefore. Uh, our chamber being able to more concretely support the work uh, of our embassy um, in Morocco, especially in terms of the outreach that you are already doing there vis-a-vis -vis our uh, Kababayan domestic workers among all our OFWs there. Um, <clears throat> moving on, Ambassador, to uh, a report uh, just this June 2020 that a Moroccan national, Younes Zabdi, died after a long struggle with sickness and poverty here in the Philippines, uh, leaving behind his Filipino wife and two toddlers. Um, the death of Zabdi remains one of several tragic stories that concern Moroccans abroad, whether stranded or members of their own diaspora, uh, in light of the global uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Ambassador, how did the Kingdom of Morocco uh, react to this unfortunate incident, Mr. Chairman? Um, um, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair, I I, um, I have a vague recollection of that case. I, I knew, uh, I remember the uh, Moroccan ambassador in the Philippines mentioning about it. But I believe uh, just like the Philippines, uh, for uh, as regards their nationals abroad, the, the Moroccan embassy assisted uh, the, their uh, deceased national. Um, mm -hmm. If you wish, I can get further details, ma'am, but um, I, uh, I, I, I am pretty aware of the, the case, but I don't have much details, unfortunately. It's all right, Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think I see Secretary Loxin, um requesting to be yes, recognized. Loxin, the chair. Uh, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm sorry for interfering like this, but um, uh, with the, the, your question um, bothers me because I remember I, I worked based on, on some information from a man, an American who was deported, there was a there was a foreign legionnaire who was arrested in the Philippines in the airport, and then he was detained for, uh, by the time it came to my attention, I was not yet, I was in media, um, but uh, it, he was detained that long, and uh, they were, the allegations were that he was being used as a milking cow, and then, um, Lisa Marcos and I tried to help him, but I think um, we were warned off. So he basically rotted in, what is that place? In, 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 uh, in the detention facility. So I want to know if that is the same national. And in fact, I have brought that up with the French and I said, that's really nice the way you uh, reward those who fight for you. That instead of giving them French citizenship, you give them a certificate that they are legionnaires. Unfortunately, a legionnaire is not a nationality, and that was on that pretext that he was arrested. Now, I don't even know, and I cannot find out whatever happened to that poor man. So, uh, it ne it never, to be fair, it never got to the DFA. It was just squelched. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, one, one more thing. Um, there is a real um, senator, uh, senator um, Antiveros. There's a special relevance to Casablanca, because when it ends, and this is relevant today, remember when the police uh, officer and Humphrey Bogart walk away, Ingrid Bergman's gone, and the, and the uh, police captain says, now we arrest the usual suspects. That was the end. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Also for that additional recollection of one of the less romantic moments uh, in that immortal film. Less romantic, maybe more realistic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. But I'm also glad to uh, share with the Secretary and the good ambassador as well that uh, this um, case of... Um, uh, Younes Zabdi is of much, much more recent vintage. Um, this was June of this year. And I really, uh, and it seems at least based on the reports that his was a very different set of circumstances. Unfortunately, it also ended uh, sadly. So uh, I'll just add uh, a few more details to what I hope the good ambassador can update the committee about. Um, 
about this, uh, Mr. Zabri, in the same report, it was stated that his Filipino widow, so our Kababayan, called for the repatriation of her half-Moroccan children and for her husband's body to be buried in Morocco. So I just like to request uh, the good ambassador through the chair uh, when he furnishes the committee uh, with an update to include, please, if he can, an update on the request uh, of Arka Babayan, the widow of uh, Mr. Zabdi. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Ambassador. And just as a last point, uh, it's almost trivia, but not quite. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I note that uh, you will also have concurrent jurisdiction uh, over the Republic of Mali. And uh, I wonder, Ambassador, if you are already familiar uh, with that uh, famous uh, rock band in Mali named Tina Riwen, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'm afraid I have to say no, ma'am. Uh, but I'll okay. certainly look that up. Yes, thank you, Ambassador. I think it will be worth your while. This Tina Riwen um, has almost mythical, indeed, rock star status uh, in the musical and even revolutionary history uh, of Mali. So I think it will really be worth your while as more than a point of curiosity uh, to look into this uh, Tina Riwen. And I hope that they are playing again uh, a positive role uh, in what the good ambassador described as uh, a fluid uh, political situation in Mali. So that's all for the good ambassador. Ambassador, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ambassador, advanced congratulations and mabuhay po kayo. I wish you a very uh, fruitful and happy posting uh, in Morocco and the other countries over which you will have jurisdiction. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Maraming right, salamat, you. Senator Indiveros. Uh, the Chair also would like to recognize the presence of uh, Representative Bem Noel and uh, Josephine Nenesato. Ma'am, welcome. And uh, uh, Congressman Noel, welcome. Wala na po, magtatanong. Yes, uh, Senator Tolentino. Just another trip, yeah. If I may add, uh, Mr. Ambassador, if you go to the end of uh, Morocco, you'll reach Tangiers. And in Tangiers, you'll find the Cave of Hercules. So Hercules is not just a mythical figure for Moroccans. It's, he was a real person. There's a tourist destination there uh, showing the, the footprints of Hercules. Just another trip, yeah, Mr. Nice to know, sir. Thank you. Any more? You are excused, uh, Ambassador, and uh, congratulations. Advanced congratulations. Thanks a lot, Paul. As they said in uh, the movie Casablanca, this is the beginning of a nice friendship. Salamat po. Meron po bang magtatanong kay? Yes, please. Uh, you're, you're excused in the meantime. Any member who would uh, want to propound questions to uh, Ambassador Balatbat? Yes, Senator Tiberius, kindly occupy the front seat. And if you have any introductory statement, you may uh, do so. Uh, good morning, uh, esteemed members of the Commission on Appointments. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Raymond Balatbat, a career officer in the Foreign Service. I've been with the department for 24 years. Uh, this is my, if if, uh, if you would allow me, this will be my first posting as ambassador. I have worked uh, in various offices of the department. I am currently the executive director of the Office of Middle East and African Affairs. And uh, the, I have stayed mostly with the Office of Middle East and African Affairs. I was posted also in Saudi Arabia, in uh, Jakarta, in Brunei. And these are all Muslim countries and I am very much familiar with the Muslim world and also the Arab world. And uh, if I ever, if I ever get your confirmation, I would like to continue the programs of uh, currently being, being undertaken in the Beirut PE, such as uh, the repatriation of OFWs, uh, the provision of uh, 
uh, ATN assistance to nationals and consular services, such as in legal cases and in medical cases, uh, continue the provision of uh, the distribution of food packs to the uh, our OFWs, providing other consular services such as passports, renewals, translation of documents, and other uh, services necessary for our OFWs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo, Ambassador uh, Balatbat. Um, as we um, may know, uh, Ambassador, Lebanon uses a kafala or a sponsorship system that binds workers to one employer and restricts them from seeking labor protection for unpaid wages uh, and even leaving the country. Human rights uh, and labor organizations have uh, criticized the kafala system as enabling a modern-day slave trade. In 2007, our country imposed a deployment ban because of the different kinds of abuses that our kababayan were experiencing. And in April, just this year, it was reported that the Department of Labor and Employment listed Lebanon as a priority country for OFW uh, repatriation, uh, which the ambassador also just mentioned. So, Ambassador, uh, first of all, what is the current status of the repatriation of our fellow Filipinos working in Lebanon, Mr. Chairman? Uh, thank you for the question, Madam, Madam Senator. Uh, we are still, uh, the repatriation program is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, as of now, we have repatriated almost 3,500 of mm -hmm. our OFWs who are mostly uh, household service workers. Mm -hmm. uh, the main problem really with Lebanon is that the uh, household service workers are not covered by the labor code. Uh -huh. And uh, Hence, they are not uh, given. Uh, they are not given their benefits. Uh, they are. Um, they are. Uh, there is no standard labor contract for our OFWs there. Uh, but despite all these difficulties, we still have a large number of OFWs mm -hmm. uh, who uh, are mostly trafficked and uh, into Lebanon. They are also undocumented. A lot, mm -hmm. a lot of them are also undocumented. So that is our problem, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for that update, Ambassador. And the note of concern that I can clearly hear, uh, even in the good Ambassador's voice, um, it's really unfortunate that, for example, the uh, Convention on the Rights of Domestic Workers while, for example, here in our country already reflected in the Kasambahay law, is not uh, also already reflected in the national, in the labor laws uh, in Lebanon. And I, I hope that the good ambassador will um, work with our labor organizations and allow our labor organizations working with overseas Filipinos to work with him uh, in pursuing that advocacy uh, in your new posting. Ambassador, uh, pending their repatriation, especially during this time of pandemic, what safety measures and or assistance are we providing to them? Uh, for example, are we providing them financial, psychological, and mental health support, among others, Mr. Chairman? Uh, as far as uh, the reports uh, given by our embassy in Beirut, uh, we have been uh, accommodating those who are who have uh, uh, separated from their uh, employers we have a shelter in the in the embassy uh -huh. we are housing them and uh, um, we are also the process is very um, it's very it's quite long actually in uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Lebanon because there are many procedures being uh, imposed upon by uh, the Lebanese authorities so mm -hmm. it takes time for us to uh, repatriate our workers uh, for those who are uh, out some of the, our workers uh, of course uh, they have families they have they, they've been settling they've settled there for so long that they have families and uh, they they find it hard to leave mm -hmm. Lebanon despite the difficult situation there 
our labor office there is providing um, also uh, counseling and also mm -hmm. uh, uh, services, the necessary services, legal advice, uh, to uh, especially for those of our workers who have uh, uh, who have cut ties with their employers. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ambassador, and I appreciate that uh, despite the difficult circumstances that the good Ambassador mentioned, which I'm sure affect not only our uh, overseas Filipino workers, but also our embassy um, staff, that still uh, the embassy is uh, continuing to uh, try to extend those different uh, services that I asked about. I hope both in this aspect of uh, easing the um, many procedures that the ambassador mentioned are imposed by the Lebanese government and also advancing uh, the labor rights uh, of our kababayan working as domestic workers in the absence of something like our own kasambahay law uh, in uh, the Lebanese uh, labor code that uh, uh, we here, uh, particularly in the Senate, can, can work uh, with a good ambassador in advancing one of the advocacies of our overseas Filipino workers, which is the bilateral treaties uh, between our country and the the other country, the other countries where our embassies and consulates are based. Uh, kalimitan po advocacy nila ito in terms of the portability of pension benefits, but where the principles of such bilateral treaties can assist also in these matters that we're talking about, good ambassador, I hope that uh, we can support you in that way. Um, ambassador, it was uh, reported in March this year that uh, the Philippines suspended the deployment of Filipino workers to Lebanon because of the political and economic situations. Uh, looking forward, Ambassador, is it still possible to lift the suspension of deployment and have full good relations with Lebanon? And in, in what way does the Ambassador see this can become uh, possible again, Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the political situation in Lebanon is it, it's quite uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. um, they've had three governments in the last three years, and uh, the current prime minister now is was the same prime minister who was forced out of office three years ago. Mm -hmm. There is a political gridlock worsened by the economic crisis. Uh, mm -hmm experiencing uh, which uh, Lebanon is experiencing right now uh, the depreciation of the Lebanese lira mm -hmm. high unemployment which is further compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic so um, it's uh, it's quite a difficult uh, um, it's quite uh, Lebanon is undergoing a difficult uh, phase right now and uh, mm -hmm. We have to assist our OFWs during this uh, critical time. Sorry, Senator Nibes. Isn't the reason why yes, you're so mad, Ambassador? Sir. Yes, sir. I well, I'm not. I am under no illusions. Uh, when I go there, I know there will be challenges facing their problems. Thank you. Yes, please continue. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also for eliciting a laugh from our good ambassador. Actually, Chair, napapansin ko rin po yung medyo malungkot yung demeanor nyo, ambassador. So, kasama po ni Chair at ng iba pa pong mga uh, fellow legislators na nandito. I just, at this moment, would like to express our moral support to you. Uh, and actually, appreciation yung pagharap ninyo realistically, but uh, with that sense of duty, kahit sa isang napaka mahirap na sitwasyon na kinakaharap, uh, ninyo at ng magiging host country um, ninyo. Uh, and so I, I also noted, Mr. Chairman, na uh, uh, hindi pa po napoproject ni Ambassador uh, under what conditions ma malilif, no yung suspension of deployment, full good relations with Lebanon dahil nga napakahirap siguro. Dahil nga siguro napakahirap ng sitwasyon sa ngayon. But we do support uh, the good ambassador in contributing uh, to that, uh, in a way, normalization uh, of um, relations, including labor relations with Lebanon through the work that I'm sure he will do for our country while there. 
Uh, lastly, uh, Ambassador, uh, could you give us an update about the condition of our fellow Filipinos who were injured and those whose families were left behind due to the catastrophic explosion at the port of Beirut last August, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Madam Chair, I um, actually, I, 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 the last report that I've read of that is that most of the most of those uh, who were hurt during the blast were already assisted, mm -hmm. and uh, those who were perished during the explosion, the remains were already uh, repatriated. Uh, although I'm, uh, I'm not really sure if this, uh, uh, if there have been subsequent developments. Thank you, Ambassador. If um, uh, there are any other subsequent developments that are documented uh, by the department, and I would appreciate it if the good Ambassador could furnish it to our committee through our chairman. Uh, and lastly, uh, Ambassador, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a bit of trivia also, but I don't know, sometimes these trivia also give us um, inspiration and hope. Uh, when we say the name of the country, Lebanon, one thing also that comes to mind is that uh, vivid and quite beautiful description in the Bible about the cedars of Lebanon. So uh, I, I just like to express, Mr. Chairman, my wish that uh, the good ambassador facing as he is really a very challenging situation in that country um, will have all the sources of inspiration and uh, hope and uh, moral support to do his important work for our country and our kababayan there. Maraming salamat po, uh, Ambassador. Congratulations at mabuhay po kayo. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Madam. Any more? Just a little reminder no, to the three of you when you go back to the office of the department kindly thank your secretary personally he really you know personally followed up that you'll be scheduled today being the last day of session so <laughs> and uh, as a parting uh, question para kay secretary Loxin, uh, this is not totally unrelated to foreign affairs no? but who dropped the ball uh, I, I think it's enough that, uh, um, uh, uh, Your, Your Honor, I think it's enough that I really lost my temper because Babes and I really work very hard and we don't like to see our efforts wasted, but never mind. I don't want to lose my temper on, on, on Zoom. Yeah. I understand, Mr. Secretary. I'm just in, uh, you know, in uh, a, a, an SMS that, uh, exchange with uh, Ambassador Babe Romualdez. And uh, you don't need to tell me because I know now who dropped the ball. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Yes, you are excused, uh, Ambassador. So, Majority Leader, unless there are questions uh, for the the third, uh, the, the appointee, I mean. If there are none, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I uh, now, now that there are no more questions for them, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Leslie Punio Baja, Chief of Mission Class One, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Kingdom of Morocco and concurrent jurisdiction with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Guinea, Republic of Mali. Islamic Republic of Mauritania and Republic of Senegal, as well as to give its consent to the nomination of uh, uh, Ambassador <coughs> Raymond Reyes Balatbat as Chief Mission Class Two, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Lebanese Republic, Mr. Chairman. I so move. How about the, the appointee, majority leader? And in addition, in addition, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Leandro Luis Soliven Manantan as Foreign Service Officer Class 2. I so move, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you. There's a motion to recommend to the plenary the, for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Leslie Junio Baja, Chief of Mission Class One, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Kingdom of Morocco, with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Guinea, Republic of Mali, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, and Republic of Senegal, as well as uh, the, to the nomination of Ambassador Raymond Reyes Balatbat, Chief of Mission Plus Two, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Lebanese Republic, and the interim appointment of Mr. Leandro Luis Sullivan Manantan as Foreign Service Officer Plus Two. Is there any objection? There being none, the same is hereby approved. Mr. Chairman. Majority Leader. There being, being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn this meeting. Is there any objection? Hearing none, hearing none. The motion is hereby approved. The uh, meeting is adjourned. Congratulations.
on constitutional commissions and offices of the Commission on Appointments in the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. The agenda is the deliberation on the nomination of Ms. Amy Perolino Ampolocchio as Commissioner, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2027, uh, Vice uh, uh, Commissioner Al A. Pareño, who has retired. Okay. So the Secretary of the Commission is directed to call the roll. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. The Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices. The Honorable Chairperson, Senator Cynthia A. Villar is present in uh, online. <clears throat> the other officers and members of this committee are Ferrer the Fourth, Alvarez Jr., Cagas, Chepeco Jr., present, Go. Present. Antiveros. Present. Lapson. <clears throat> Marcos. Noel. Imentel the third. Po. Ramirez Sato. Villa Jr. Valentino Subiri Zamora Palmario Present Villanueva Pancho Present Drilon. Present, present. Advincula. Present. Peron. Uh, Mr. Secretary, did you call uh, 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 Congressman Arbison? I think uh, he's here. I didn't hear the call. Uh, I did not, uh, Madam Chair. He has not yet taken his oath, but we recognize his virtual okay. presence, Your Honor. Okay. With 20 members present, including myself, I declare, I declare the presence of a quorum. Okay. The Chair acknowledges the, pre the uh, rather the presence of our uh, nominee, under consideration of the committee is the nomination of Ms. Amy P. Ferrolino Ampolocchio as Commissioner, Commission on Elections for a term expiring February 2, 2027, Vice Al A. Pareño. May we invite the Commissioner Amy P. Ferrolino Ampolocchio to take the seat in front. And may we now hear Secretary Villacorta's report on the status of the jurisdictional requirement in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees and other relevant information about the nominee. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. Commissioner Amy P. Ferrolino Ampolocchio has complied with the submission of the documentary requirements as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. Her current nomination was referred by Commission Chairperson, uh, Senate President Vicente C. C. Soto III, to the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices on November 25, 2020, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. Likewise, her nomination was published on November 27, 2020 in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 on November 26, 
7.01 p.m. pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees. A total of six endorsements were received by the Secretariat this morning in support of the confirmation of Ms. Amy P. Ferrolino Ampolocchio as Commissioner, Commission on Elections, for a term expiring on February 2nd, 2027, and the following were the ones who filed. Commission on Elections Employees Union, Comelec EU, Provincial Election Supervisors Association of the Philippines, PESAP, Comelec Division Chiefs Association, Commissioner Socorro B. Inting, Circle of Assistant Regional Election Directors, CARIB, and Chairman Sheriff M. Abbas. There is no opposition filed against the nomination of Commissioner Amy Ferrolino Ampolocchio. Additionally, I was directed by the Madam Chairperson of the Committee to read the following. On behalf of the Committee, the Chair acknowledges the Chairperson of the Commission, of the Commission on Elections, Sheriff M. Abbas, who are joining us online. Should there be any query from any member concerning the Comelec the spokesperson of COMELEC and Director 4 of the Education and Information Department, Director James Jimenez, or Director 4 of Election and Barangay Affairs Department, Director Teopisto Elnas Jr. of COMELEC, who is physically present, may be able to answer any query of our members. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Villacorta, please administer the oath to Commissioner Ferrolino Ampolocchio. Kindly, Madam, please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding, so help you God? I do. Madam Chairperson, the nominee is now under oath. Okay. Commissioner Ferrolino Ampolocchio, you may now proceed with your introductory statement. Thank you, Your Honor, Madam Chair. Your Honor, Madam Chair, Cynthia A. Villar, Your Honor, Vice Chair, Luis Ferrer, Sir, Your Honors, members of this committee, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. With your permission, Madam Chair, May I first extend my gratitude to you and everyone here for taking time to be here today. I've been looking forward to this day for two reasons. First, my classmates in law school used to joke and call me commissioner. Second, in a conversation with my four-year-old Apo a few days ago, he told me in Cebuano, Wawa on saman, gimingaw ka na ko or wala. Or, well, what do you miss me or not? Which is it? I don't know if it, is, it was a show of affection or a threat. Whatever the result of today's confirmation hearing will be, I look forward to going home and spending time with my family, especially on Christmas Day. I am Attorney Amy Ferrolino Ampolocchio. Before my nomination as Commissioner of the Commission on Elections, last November 24, 2020, by His Excellency President Rodrigo R. Duterte, I was the Provincial Election Supervisor for the province of Davao del Norte in Mindanao. I wasn't always a PES or Provincial Election Supervisor. 20 year, 26 years ago in 1994, I joined COMELEC as an emergency laborer. I have been always proud that I started as an emergency laborer, rising from the ranks to my appointment as City Election Officer then Provincial Election Supervisor, and all the designations and special assignments in between. It humbles me so much that a lot of my co-workers and colleagues have been so, so inspired by my nomination as Commissioner that they have regained their enthusiasm at work and began to dream again and set goals for themselves. Your Honours, my father was my inspiration. He was a Comelec Election Registrar after teaching grade school. He was instrumental in my choice of career among others. Being my hero, I love that I became a lawyer because he wanted me to be one. I became a provincial election supervisor 
because he dreamed of me being more than the election registrar than he was when he retired. It would be my honor and lifelong wish granted to be more than he ever dreamed about and become a commissioner in an institution that we, that we will have both served with integrity and dedication for many years. I am proud to represent the 6,578 hardworking, loyal, and dedicated workforce in the COMELEC, who, who time and again never failed to deliver, even under the most dangerous of circumstances, just so our mandate to make sure every vote is counted, protected, and upheld. I'm glad to say that my hard work paid off with my nomination as commissioner. Today, as I stand in front of you, I hope for three things to happen. Number one, I hope, hope for the job in law, law school to become a reality. Number two, I hope to realize the dream of my father. And number three, I hope to come home to my family with the best news this Christmas. To my apo, gimingaw si wawa nimo. I will be home soon. Thank you and the best morning to us all, your honors. Uh, the nominee is now ready to respond to any question, comment or question from the members. Please raise your hand so I can uh, recognize you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I, uh, who is that? I cannot see. The Francis Ma Ma Okay. Uh, we recognize Senator Francis Tolentino. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, glancing at the records and uh, the manifestations of support coming from uh, various uh, sectors, including the rank and file of the Commission on Elections, I, I, I see no problem relative to the uh, support as well as the acceptance coming from the Comelec family uh, towards the nominee, uh, especially uh, considering that she rose from the ranks. Her father served the Comelec for 28 years. 26 years. 26 years as a co 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 Comelec election officer. And her heritage uh, itself being an Ilocano and Cebuano and partly Mindanao and probably votes well for her uh, uh, future uh, Comelec commissionership post. Uh, just one, one question, uh, uh, Madam Chair. I have no, I think she's uh, qualified. Uh, looking forward, and I've been addressing all, uh, this for the last several occasions concerning our overseas voters, uh, Ms. Madam Chair. The Philippines is uh, producing, I think, the second or the, the third largest contingent of seafarers, and our overseas. Uh, voting absentee law is uh, void of any steps that, that the Commission on Elections should undertake to enable them to vote. 400,000 aboard ships not able to vote. Would, would, the, would the prospect of having all of these uh, seafarers, seamen uh, be in the horizon in so far as the mindset of our future commissioner is concerned. C can they be allowed to vote electronically, by mail? Uh, because we're depriving more than, uh, I think it's now uh, half a million uh, on board ships. And, and these are not affected by COVID-19 because they're there to uh, load and load cargoes going to the Mediterranean, Atlantic Ocean, and yet they're deprived of the right to vote. Is, is this part of your uh, thinking perhaps uh, madam commissioner that they should be enfranchised in the near in the near term uh looking forward uh, but the difficulty would be how to bring them to the embassies how to bring them to the consulate so is that is this part of your uh, uh thinking how to enfranchise them i'm sure marami ka rin kababayan na nakasakay ngayon sa sa mga barko sa iba't ibang lugar sa buong mundo your Honor, Madam Chair, um, Sir Senator Tolentino, regarding the overseas voters, I was informed yesterday in a meeting with the senior staff of the COMELEC that there's an ongoing study of 
online voting for the overseas voters. I think it would be benefit many of the overseas voters who were not able to vote during the past elections. And the study is still ongoing, so I hope it will help in the coming elections. In effect, you're in favor. I have no further questions, uh, Madam uh, Chairwoman. I think the nominee is highly qualified to be a commissioner of the Commission on Elections. Maraming salamat po, Madam. Thank you, Senator Tolentino. Are there any more questions? Uh, Senate, uh, Minority Floor Leader Drillon. <coughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. If there are further questions from other members, I'm willing to uh, to give way. But if none, uh, if uh, with the permission of the chair, or I can proceed. If there are no other member who would wish to raise questions. <clears throat> yes, uh, ma Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> we note that the nominee uh, has had a long career in the Commission on Elections starting in December 1994 as an emergency laborer up to the present position as provincial elections supervisor. Uh, for the record, that is confirmed, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes, yes uh, Senator Drillon. Yes. Um, so, okay. Uh, Madam Chair, um, would the re would the nominee have any relatives who are elected officials, particularly in the uh, in, in the uh, the in in, uh, in uh, Region Eleven, where she is the uh, provincial election supervisor? Uh, do you want me to answer or the another uh, answer? I, I'm, I am addressing, Madam Chair, the question to the nominee. Okay. Please answer the question. Madam Chair, Your Honors. Yes, sir, I have three uh, siblings. Two are barangay kagawads in, the, uh, in our barangay, and one is the vice mayor of the municipality of Magsaysay. However, the province is not under my jurisdiction as provincial election supervisor. I am the election supervisor of Davao del Norte, while they are serving as elected officials of Davao del Sur. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So you are, you are making a clar clarification that while you have relatives uh, uh, who are occupying elective positions. They are in situated in localities which are not under your jurisdiction. Uh, is that correct, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so you're saying that, uh, in effect, you're saying that you could not possibly influence uh, the uh, cases or, or, no, no. You could not possibly influence the decision on any matter involving your relatives because uh, you, they, they, they are uh, candidates or elected officials in places other than where you are uh, a provincial election supervisor. Uh, is that that's what we're saying? Madam Chair, Your Honors, my decisions ever since when I assumed office as an employee of the Commission were never influenced by any relative or even an acquaintance or friends, Your Honor. That mm -hmm. I can proudly say that my integrity has never been in question ever since, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not saying that your influence were just pointing out that as you observe, asserted uh, that you, you that they are outside of your jurisdiction. That's all we are saying now. Um, We have noted that uh, you are you also used to or are still in uh, 
uh, involved in the practice of law or no more? Are you still um, uh, practicing law or you have ceased to practice law and become a full-time uh, um, uh, officer or employee of the Commonwealth? Just for the record. Your Honours, I've stopped uh, practicing law. My law office was closed after the earthquake that rocked Davao, Davao region, Your Honour, last year. Mm -hmm. So only, only, can we clarify it again? I'm sorry, I did catch you. You ceased a practicing law when? 2019, Your Honor. So last year. Uh, and how long was yeah. were you in the field of private practice? Um, from the time that I took my oath, Your Honor, so from 2007 until last year, Your Honor. Okay. So a period of uh, 12 years. In those 12 years period, it overlaps the period when you were uh, in, uh, in the Commonwealth uh, as a, a government employee. In other words, you were in the Comelec and you had a law office. Yes, Your Honor, but I have associates, Your Honor. Um, I'm allowed, I have an authority to practice, Your Honor, but I only practice when uh, time allows, Your Honor. So you had, uh, uh, you were given an exemption under civil service rules to practice law. Is that, is that for the, yes? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we, we are given limited authority to practice, Your Honor. Um, do you have a copy of that written authority? I, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I do not have it with me right now, Your Honor, but it's on file in the office, Your Honor. Uh, and you can submit that. This is a public document. Yes, Honor, I will do that when I get home and get the copies, Your Honor. Thank you. So you said that uh, you had associates. Uh, how many associates did you have in your office? Uh, for the last year, Your Honor, I have one. And after my, after I took my oath as a lawyer, Your Honor, several because the office was really not ex exclusively run by me. Rather, I just joined uh, just whenever my time allows me, Your Honor. I'm not into full practice. I just, uh, because my, my time would be limited during the preparations for the elections and election time, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, just for the record, your law office did not handle any case before the Comedic whether uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Region 11 or anywhere else? Your Honor, none with the Comelec, Your Honor. I only accepted just a few. I can even count it in my with my fingers, Your Honor. Just a very few cases, Your Honor. Uh, yes, can you just uh, put them on record? Uh, none of this you said are with the Comelec, but can you, you place a record these cases that you handled? As you said, you can there are very few cases. Uh, yes, Your Honor, none, never with Comelec. I've never handled a case uh, with Comelec, Your Honor, except uh, appearing as a representative of the Commission, but not me representing any party before the Comelec, Your Honor. I'm sorry, can you say that again, ma'am? I did catch, catch it quite well. Can you, can you say that again? Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you repeat yeah, Your it? Honor, I, I did not handle... Uh, any case before the commission, Your Honor, uh, whether representing a part, any party, Your Honor, but I only handle cases that are outside the Comelex jurisdiction, Your Honor. Okay. Neither you nor your law firm represent any party in cases before the Comelex. That's what we're, that, that's for the record. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Because we're trying, we're asking these questions to, you know, uh, to find out whether there was an, uh, uh, an issue of conflict of interest uh, between uh, you being a practicing lawyer uh, for 12 years and, uh, 
and uh, you're, you're, you're being a combat official. Would any of your associates uh, have, would any of your associates, uh, had any of your associates uh, handled uh, any combat matter during the time that you were uh, uh, an officer of the combat? I'm referring to your associates. Did your associates handle cases before the common uh, To my knowledge, no, Your Honor, none before the common They only handle civil and criminal cases, but not before the common Your Honor. Mm, no. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, is, are you or any of your relatives uh, uh, involved in any business? My husband is involved in the rice, their family is involved in the rice and corn meal business, Your Honor, but no other business that I know of. Yes. Uh, this rice and corn business is reflected in your statement of assets and liabilities? Yes, Your Honor, it's reflected in my sal and Your Honor. And uh, did you declare your business interest in that uh, rice and corn business in your salon? Yes, Your Honor. It was the family business of my husband, Your Honor, it, and it was declared in the salon, Your Honor. Uh, in your own salon? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, what was the value of your participation that you stated in your uh, statement of assets and liabilities? That uh, the total, I'm sorry, Your Honor, the total value of my assets, Your Honor. No, no. You're saying that uh, you reported uh, the uh, rice and corn business of your family. Uh, as part of your statement of assets and liabilities, uh, do I get so? My 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 impression is that uh, it was part of your assets. Uh, you are part of that business, and therefore reported it as part of your statement of assets. Otherwise, um, otherwise you would not have included that uh, business if uh, uh, you uh, it was not part of your assets. Uh, Your Honor, I declared it in my salon because my, my husband is part of the business, Your Honor, but I have no part participation or interest in the said business, Your Honor. Only my husband, Your Honor. Only your husband. So you have no, uh, that, that is why you included it because it is an asset of your husband, not your own. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And... Uh, uh, isn't that uh, so? He, your your husband was in uh, was or the family of your husband was in this uh, business even before you got married. Uh, that's uh, the records will show that. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, isn't it that uh, the property of your husband is also your property? under our laws, uh, community of, 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 of properties, property? Yes, Your Honor. So the interest of your husband is also part of, is also your business interest. It's not entirely correct that, uh, this is, that, that, that this asset is not yours. Uh, Your Honor, I do not participate in the running of the business, Your Honor. It's just a very small business. But um, I have no personal interest with the rice and rice and cornmeal business of my husband's family, Your Honor. Yes, we understand that. We're asking whether or not it's part of your assets for purposes of your statement of assets and liabilities. Since this is a property of your husband or husband's family, and we and, and, and this is brought in the con conjugal uh, 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 partnership uh, or in the community of property between husband and wife. Yes, Your Honor, I agree. Uh, the, whatever earnings my husband 
derived from the said family business, however small, becomes part of the community property, Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even their husband's interest there is part of the community property. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so did you value uh, your husband's uh, uh, participation in that family business? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Were you asking about the how value? Much, of yes. How much is uh, how much would you attribute as the asset of your husband in that family business? I really have no exact figure, Your Honor. Uh, but they only get minimal shares from the income of the said business, Your Honor, and it is always attached to the. Uh, submission of my income tax returns, Your Honor, as we file yes. it jointly, Your Honor. Yes, uh, yes, uh, that, that we're talking about the income, we're talking about the asset you have. Uh, we, we, we admit, or you admit, that even though this is your husband's, uh, your, the family of your husband uh, who owns this. Uh, it's a business. Sorry, ma'am. So, okay, the, my question is, um, in your statement of assets and liabilities, how much value did you indicate for the assets of your husband, which, as you said, becomes part of the uh, community of the, of the, of the uh, community property? Uh, I'm, Your Honor, I'm sorry, but I... As I remember it, I did not put any amount as to the to the assets or the acquisition cost because I am not personally involved in the running of the business, Your Honor. It may be might be an omission on my part, Your Honor, but I, I do not have the records for the for the assets of the said business, Your Honor, it being incorporated even before we were married, Your Honor. Yes, I think we are not disputing that, that this was uh, incorporated before uh, you were married, and uh, therefore uh, you had... Uh, uh, but you also uh, admit that, uh, uh, that uh, there is, this is part of your assets as a, as a wife. Um, yes, you would not personally participate in the, uh, in the operations, but this is part of your assets. In fact, you reported it in your statement of assets and liabilities. Yes, so Your Honor, it was reported. It was reported. Yes, Your Honor. I just do not have the, the exact figure, the exact amount, Your Honor, but it was all the documents were submitted during the filing of the income tax returns, Your Honor. Yes, uh, uh, there is no question about that. So we would like to know uh, if indeed the value of the assets of your husband's family business, which is part of your of your property as a married couple, uh, was truly reflected in your statement of assets and liabilities. That's why we're asking the question, how much did you value your husband's uh, participation? Not in the profit, but in the asset. Uh, Senate Minority Floor Leader, may I intercede? Sure, we should. May I intercede? Yes. Because I come also from a family business uh, during the initial years of our marriage. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, when you inherited something from your parents, uh, they do not give it to you until they die. Uh, maybe they give you the income as a as a parang employee of the inherited business, but the business is still with the parents. Usually the parents, the one you will inherit from your parents, they don't give you the assets until they die. So you just get some income from them, but never the assets of the business, especially the small businesses. So I think uh, the parents of her husband, did not give the asset yet. It's just that the husband is working for there and being a son, 
is entitled yes. to something. And so they have income from there, but not the assets. I, I don't know, but that is usually the practice in uh, family businesses, in small yes. family businesses. So maybe that's the case with our, yes. I know, with our uh, 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 no. family official. Okay, so I guess she's not very that's familiar okay. with the asset of the business. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for that intervention. Uh, however, the uh, nominee is a lawyer, and she has uh, indicated in her statement of assets and liabilities, this rice and corn business. So it is perfectly legitimate for us to find out if there was a true, uh, if, if the valuation, uh, uh, as indicated in the asset side of the, uh, submi of the submission of the salary, indeed is reflective of the value of the assets that the husband uh, uh, or, or that the marriage has because uh, this uh, uh, participation is part of the uh, community of, 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 of property of the husband and the wife. So, yes, ma'am, uh, we are asking these questions because it is so indicated as an asset by the nominee. He is the one who said this is an asset, and that's why he reflected it in the statement of assets and liabilities. That it is not yet transferred, I don't think that that's, uh, the, 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 that's uh, an issue here because the because uh, as admitted by the uh, uh, nominee, uh, this is an asset that she included in her statement of assets and liabilities. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, she would have excluded this. So may I have the answer, Madam Chair, to my question from the nominee? Uh, Your Honor, I'm sorry. May I know what was the last question again, Your Honor? Um, yes, uh, uh, Madam Chair, the question that I raised is, how much was the value of the uh, uh, asset uh, of your husband in that family business, which uh, you included in your statement of assets and liabilities? Uh, your Honours, Madam Chair, my question, uh, that my answer would be, uh, since I do not have personal involvement in the running of the business, Your Honour, I have no knowledge of the actual assets by of the said business your honor however if uh i can get uh documents your honor i can submit to this honorable body your honor if it uh, if you require it your honor uh yes i would request that these documents be submitted because this is part of your uh, statements in your sala and as part of your assets and uh, uh, you correctly included this because uh, uh, this is part of the community of, of the uh, property regime. Uh, in other words, it's a, a community asset, a community of, of, of partnership between you and your husband. And rightfully, it should be included as you did in your statement of assets and liabilities. So the uh, logical question is uh, how much uh, uh, is the asset worth? You said you have no personal involvement in the operation that's uh, that, therefore you 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 uh, but that is completely separate from the asset because i'm not talking about the income i am talking about the valuation of the asset which you yourself included in your statement of assets and liabilities uh, you said that uh, you can produce this uh, you can answer this question when the uh, when uh, by by looking at i assume the uh, uh, audited financial statement, if this is a corporation, uh, so that you will be able to tell us accurately uh, what is the value of this asset and uh, whether or not indeed uh, the correct value is indicated in your statement of assets and liabilities. So when ca can you produce this document? Yes, Your Honor, I will produce uh, copies of the document stating the valuation of, of the said business, Your Honor. Very good. Okay. Uh, I assume this is the audited uh, audited financial statement. 
or so that, that you will reduce? I have I don't have knowledge yet as to what I can get, Your Honor, but I'll get whatever is available to answer your inquiry, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we would like to see that. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, uh, I still have a number of questions to raise on policy issues and also on the documents that have been submitted, which unfortunately we didn't have much time to go over because of our very busy schedule in the Senate. So with the indulgence of uh, the good uh, nominee and our chair, may we request for a resetting, setting this for another uh, hearing of the committee, Madam Chair. Because anyway, Madam Chair, the, Madam Chair. The, the, the nominee is going to submit documents that we have requested. What, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Ma Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Villar. Uh, you, you cannot hear me. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, with the permission uh, of the... Uh, can you hear me now, Senator Tolentino? You yes, cannot hear me. Hear we can hear you, Okay. Ma uh, uh, we are recognizing you. Apparently, Madam Chair, the nominee, with, with, with all due respect to the minority leader, uh, submitted all the required documents uh, to this uh, Honorable Commission, required documents uh, such as the Ombudsman clearances and BI, uh, health uh, documents, among others. And from the initial statement made by the secretary of this commission, it appears that uh, she was able to comply with all the required uh, documents needed by, by this body uh, in terms of submission, in the same manner as all, all nominees uh, subjected to the scrutiny of this commission under the constitution submitted the, the same documents uh, and the same is true with the previous nominees uh, subjected to this uh, commission's uh, scrutiny a while ago a few a few hours ago the dfa personnel so my my submission uh, madam chair is that to impose additional uh, requirements which are not required uh, <laughs> traditionally and uh, provided for under the rules by this commission would impose an additional obligation not needed uh, at this point in time uh, by, by, by this uh, honorable body, Madam Chair. So uh, additional uh, documents not, not required uh, by this body during previous notifications are additional rules which would have to be uh, conferred in by the members of this commission. And I'm referring to the the uh, corporate documents and i'm referring to uh, audited documents which which i believe the 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 good minority leader is correct that uh, she should have in, in her possession but uh, i think the the nominee is uh, complying with what is being required of her pursuant to existing rules at the moment uh, mr uh, madam chairman so I, I, my submission is that uh, the um, we repeat again uh, for for the for the information of this body the initial statements made by the secretary of this commission. Uh, if if the if he will be allowed uh, as to the requirements submitted uh, weeks ago uh, with the permission of the the uh, good chair person, may we ask the secretary? Uh, if all the documents were uh, submitted timely uh, on, on, a, on a regular manner, uh, pursuant to existing commission on appointments uh, rules, uh, uh, Madam Chairperson. So can we allow the secretary to, to restate again the uh, previous statements as to the compliance, uh, Madam Chairman? Uh, may we uh, recognize the secretary? Thank you, Madam Chair. As uh, I mentioned in my preliminary statement, Your Honors, uh, I affirm that the nominee today 
has complied with the submission of the documentary requirements required of her, including the declaration of business interests. But that uh, declaration did not have a column on valuation, Your Honor. So, Ma Ma Madam, so, is it possible for a, the nominee to uh, fill up something which is not being required by the existing rules of this commission? Can, can she can she go beyond what is being required of her to submit <laughs> as, as, as compared to other uh, previous nominees, the generals, the DFA personnel, the cabinet members previously who, uh, who, who uh, passed by this commission? as uh, a uh, rigorous process. Do, do, uh, is, is she required to submit documents not required by the rules? Uh, uh, yes, uh, who signs, uh, we recognize, whom do we recognize? Ma'am, the, the secretary, ma'am, the secretary. Okay, the secretary, we recognize the secretary. Madam Chair, the format of the Commission on uh, Appointments has been standardized for so many years before, and the column on valuation is not part of that column. There is a paper on business interest, but there is no column on valuation, Your Honor, if that can serve as an answer. Uh, so in effect, to require additional documents right now would, be, uh, would necessitate the amendment of our rules. Uh, Madam Chairperson, so it's probably the reason why the nominee has not been able to answer correctly the questions emanating from the good minority leader because those were not required of her. Uh, she she did not uh, she does not have in her possession the audited statements because that's not required of her. The standard uh, requirements as uh, posited by the good secretary would would require uh, documents required of other uh, previous uh, nominees who were confirmed, not confirmed, bypassed, uh, rejected by this commission, and uh, to change the rules right now to require additional documents would necessitate, again, I, I posit this uh, thesis, uh, the amendment of our rules, uh, Madam Chairperson. So, the, the nominee probably is not in a position to provide the documents because we did not require her uh, to, to provide the documents. Due process would require that she be informed of the proper documents that she should bring. And she only brought with her the documents required pursuant to the rules and the notice given by the secretary of the commission, uh, Madam Chairperson. So, I think it would be unfair, uh, to say the least, to require documents uh, not required of her uh, right now, uh, Mad Madam Chairperson. So, uh, so there is a conflict now uh, uh, between uh, the opinion of the major minority floor leader of the Senate and then... Uh, uh, Madam Chair... Uh, uh, Senator Tolentino. So, can we can the committee decide on this? Because I, I don't Chair. think I can decide on this. Before, yes. Madam Chair, before you decide, can you give me the opportunity to respond to the statement? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I, I recognize you. Yes, okay. thank, thank you very much, Senator. Senator. First of all, the uh, thesis of the gentleman from Cavite is based on erroneous assumptions. We are not asking for any additional documents not required by the rules. What we are asking for is the, uh, we are probing on the document submitted. And what is the document submitted? The statement of assets and liabilities. We are trying to find out how accurate the SALN is in so far as the statement of the assets are concerned. It was the nominee who said that uh, I cannot answer that and uh, I can bring in the doc, I can bring the documents to answer that. It was not uh, I who, who, who brought that up, it was the nominee. And let me emphasize that this, uh, the questions that we raised is to test the validity of the SALN and the accuracy of the SALN. These are not additional documents, uh, as uh, erroneously uh, 
uh, as erroneously asserted by uh, the learned uh, senator from Cavite. We are not changing any rule. We are just asking uh, uh, for the accuracy of the assets, of the statement of assets. And if the... If the, uh, the rationale of the good uh, minority leader, but I, I asked for a minute suspension, Madam Chair, and for purposes of transparency uh, during that uh, suspension break, uh, Madam Chair, may we ask the nominee to approach the panel, uh, the secretary, uh, Senator Laxon is here, as well as this representation, to ask a, 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 uh, a sundry of questions, Madam Chair, that, that would probably facilitate this uh, discussion. A minute suspension, Madam Chair. Can we ask the nominee? Okay, to we will suspend the hearing for one minute. Thank you.
Madam Chair, we're ready to resume. We are resuming our session, uh, our hearing, and we acknowledge the virtual presence of Representative Heron and Senator Pimentel. And we now recognize, uh, yes, uh, Senator Pimentel. Uh, we Thank now, you. Okay. We now recognize Senator Franklin Drillon for his motion. Uh, one minute suspension, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Minority Leader Rilon, kindly formalize your motion again. Uh, may we move that we be given uh, an opportunity to continue our questioning uh, in the next uh, meeting of the committee after the nominee has submitted the documents which she mentioned would uh, be the basis of her answers to my question. I second Is the motion, any, Madam Chair. I do. Okay. Is there any objection? Okay. Madam Chair, so we suspend. Madam Chair, yes. Madam, Madam yes. Chair just Madam a Chair. manifestation that. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, while, Senator while, Tolentino. While, while the motion we recognize was Senator properly, Tolentino. Yes. Yes, ma'am. While the motion was properly made and uh, duly seconded, uh, I still maintain, uh, with all due respect, that uh, the rules. The notifications coming from this commission should apply to all, and notifications made in in a reasonable manner should not be changed during committee hearings itself. And the procedural aspect should be maintained, recognized for all, uh, whether you're a colonel, DFA, 
a commission member, or even a cabinet member. That's that's all, uh, Madam Chair. But I I concur with the with the uh, the right of the minority leader to to propose that uh, uh, motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Toledo. Senator Pimentel is asking question. Would you ask question? <laughs> You raise your hand, Senator Pimentel. Yes, yes, Madam Chair, but uh, I'm asking my staff what is the pending uh, matter because I logged in uh, late. Yeah, so, so there is I some think it's about on. some uh, doc documents about the business of the yes. spouse. Is that, uh, am yes. I correct? Yes, it's about the business yes. of the spouse. Hello? So, yes, it's about the business of the spouse. So, uh, do you hear me? Uh, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to catch up. So I've been informed. It's about uh, the minority leader is asking for asking for documents. Yes. Uh, How is my connection, ma'am? How is my connection? Very bad. Is my connection okay. very bad? No, no, you're okay. Ah, okay. Except that you're not hearing me. <laughs> so I'm hearing you, but you're not hearing me. There's something wrong with your connection there. Not here. You cannot so hear me. What, what's I can hear you, ma'am. What is going to be the effect on the nomination, ma'am, of the uh, of the nominee of the subject nominee? So today is our uh, last day, uh, our last so, uh, last, and then we, we and then we adjourn. Therefore, the nominee has to be renominated uh, during the break. Is that yes. the, going to be the effect? That's the effect. Uh, yes, I. I, guess, I don't know if there is a renomination. Yes. She has to be appointed again. No, she's not. Because there is a break. Nominated no. again. She has to be nominated again. Yes, uh, Senator. No, no, no. Uh, ma'am, Sandali, ma'am. During the break, during the break, break, she can then be appointed. Tama po ba so she will be appointed again because of this motion. She has to be appointed again. No, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, she has, at the she moment, has to be appointed at interim during the break. Uh, yes, at the moment, yes. Yeah. Because she, of the move been. of Senator Drillon to suspend the hearing and uh, seconded by Senator Risa. Okay. okay, so she has yes. to be reappointed. Okay, yes. for as long as we we are for as long as we are conscious about about the what is the effect of the motion. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you. Yes, Senator Drillon, what what uh, you want to make a manifestation? No, I want to raise a question to the chair. Yes. No. Um, isn't the matter before that as is the uh, uh con not the confirmation of an ad interim appointment but the approval of a nomination yes. in fact, uh, in fact the uh, the uh, nominee is an incumbent uh, employee of or of official of the comelec and therefore since it is only a nomination uh, asking that that uh, or uh, asking for the con for the consent of the commission then she she retains her post in the uh, comelec as she has not been appointed to any uh, to, to any other position now uh, the moment you know uh, first uh, so she has to be renominated of course yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she can be issued an ad interim appointment but uh, then, uh, with that, uh, if she assumes as an ad interim appointee, she abandons her position in the Comelec, uh, presently as provincial supervisor, because she cannot be holding two positions at the same time. And the uh, ad interim appointment, if that is being suggested, is a permanent appointment, which will only be, which will only lapse once rejected by the commission or if the session expires. 
So that's just for the record. Yes, she can be extended in an interim appointment. No question about that. But then she has to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, she's deemed to have resigned from her present uh, uh, um, uh, position because that is a career position, and you cannot hold two positions at the same time. Just for for the record, uh, just to clarify uh, the uh, the so the uh, uh, Mr. Minority Floor Leader, you mean if we suspend his uh, he this hearing, she will lose the position unless she is as, no uh, home election no. uh, registrar no. No, for no. Davao del Norte. No, Madam Chair, no. Precisely, if she is just nominated again, there is no change in the legal status. I am just proceeding from the statement that she, you, that this chair made that she can be extended an ad interim appointment during the break, which is completely different from a nomination extended to her and the consent of the uh, commission is being sought as it's being sought now. But if you change this situation, and, and your statement, Madam Chair, I'm reacting to it, that she can be extended an ad interim appointment. I am saying that there is there is nothing that will prevent the president from issuing an ad interim appointment during the uh, break, but then she cannot hold on to her position of uh, provincial uh, election supervisor. That's all. Oh. So that if, uh, if, if, uh, uh, the, if uh, she, she uh, for some reason, uh, her appointment is not confirmed, then she loses her, uh, her career position as a provincial election uh, supervisor. Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, yes uh, majority floor leader. Madam, Madam Chair, the effect of uh, suspending the meeting of the committee at this point in time when Congress is about to go on an adjournment would render the nomination of the of uh, the commissioner already uh, terminated by the time we adjourn and it is now up to the president whether he will give an appointment at interim appointment during our break or give another nomination when we resume for the commission to act on. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, it is very good to be educated about the effects of ad interim and uh, the nomination. Nomination, yes. It doesn't matter really, Madam Chairman. We have to proceed with the hearing now, whether we go to plenary or we suspend. And because of the earlier uh motion oh, to the sure. floor leader for uh, senator Dillon, then uh, it is most likely that uh, we will have to suspend hearing of the committee madam chair so so uh so it has been moved and seconded that we suspend the hearing on the nomination of miss imp perolino uh ampolocchio as commissioner of as commissioner commission on elections uh so uh we are suspending the hearing because of that is there any objection there being no objection we suspend the hearing okay but, but majority there, floor leader there being no other matters to discuss i vote to adjourn this meeting on the motion of the majority floor leader judy seconded there being no objection the meeting is hereby adjourned thank you very much
The 11th plenary session of the Commission on Appointments in the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Let us all pause for a minute of silent prayer. remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Secretary, will please call the roll. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments, Patrincola, Almario, Present, Alvarez Jr., Present, Arbison, Pagas, Tepeco Jr., Present, Brennan, Brennan, Red the Fourth, Present, Don, Go, Present, Pontiveros, Present, Lapson, Marcos, Present, There's a video like it too. Noel, Present. Pancho Present Pimentel the Third Present Po Present Ramirez Sato Present Revilla Jr. Present Valentino Villanueva Present Villar Present Tamora. Present. Sobiri. Present. The chairperson is present. With uh, two members physically present and 20 online, uh, for a total of 22, the chair declares the, the existence of a quorum. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on December 9, 2020, and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The journal is approved. Uh, Mr. Leader. Chair, Mr. Chair, on December 9, 2020, plenary session, the body elected Representative Gavini Apol C. Pancho, as Assistant Majority Floor Leader of the Commission, <laughs> Vice Representative Benjamin Agarao Jr. However, Representative Pancho has not yet taken his oath. May I ask Mr. Chair that Representative Pancho takes his oath as the Assistant Majority Floor Leader of the Commission? All right. Uh, um... Hearing no objection, uh, we shall ask now the um, uh, Representative Pancho sure. to uh, take the oath. Uh, do, you have a do you have a copy of the oath, uh, Congressman? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, please raise your hand and um, um, read your oath. Ako, si Gavini Apol si Pancho, ng ikalawang distrito ng Bulacan, na inyalay sa katungkulan bilang Assistant Majority Floor Leader ng Commission on Appointments, ay taimpim na nanunumpa na tutuparin ko ng buong husay at katapatan sa abot ng aking kakayahan ang mga tungkulin ng aking kasalukuyang katungkulan at ng mga iba pang pagkaraan nito ay gagampan naman ko sa ilalim ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Na aking itataguyod at ipagtatanggol ang saligang batas ng Pilipinas na tunay na namananalig at tatalima ako rito. Nasusundin ko ang mga batas, mga kautosan legal at mga dekretong pinaiiral ng mga sadyang itinakdang makapangyarihan ng Republika ng Pilipinas at kusa akong babalikatin ang pananagutan ito na walang anumang pasubali o hangaring umiwas. Kasihan na ako ng Diyos. Congratulations, Congressman. I will now sign your oath. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. George Leader. Congratulations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask that the Secretary of the Commission reads the communication from the Secretary General of the House of Representatives Mark Leandro Dong Mendoza on the election of Representative Munir M. Arbison as a member of the House of Representatives contingent to the Commission and Appointments Vice Representative Benjamin C. Agarao Jr. I so move. The Secretary will um, uh, read the communication. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. December 7, 2020, the Honorable Vicente C. Soto III, President of the Senate, Financial Center, Pasay City. Mr. President, I have been directed to inform the Commission on Appointments that the House of Representatives on even day elected Honorable Munir M. Arbison, Vice Honorable Benjamin C. Agarao Jr., as member of the House of Representatives contingent to the Commission on Appointments. Respectfully yours, signed Mark Leandro Dong L. Mendoza, Secretary General. Therefore, the election of Representative uh, Munir Arbison as member of the House of Representatives contingent to the CA or the Commission on Appointments is hereby noted. All right, uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I ask that Representative Munir Arbison takes his oath as member of the Commission on Appointments. All right, Representative Arbison, Arbison, uh, you're online, please. Um, if you have a copy of the oath. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Raise your right hand and uh, read your oath. Ako si Munir M. Arbison, ng 2nd District Sulu. Nainalal sa katungkulan bilang member ng Commission on Appointment ay time team na manunumpa na tutuparin ko ng buong husay at katapatan sa abot ng aking kakayahan. Ang mga tungkulin ng aking kasalukuyang katungkulan at ng mga iba pang pagkaraan nito ay gagampanan ko sa ilalim ng Republika ng Pilipinas na aking itataguyod at ipagtatanggol ang saligang batas ng Pilipinas na tunay na mama, mamamalalig at tatalima ako rito. Nasusundin ko ang mga batas, mga kautusang legal at mga direktong pinaiiral na mga sadyang itinakdang may kapangyarihan ng Republika ng Pilipinas at kusa kong babalikatin at panagutang ito ng walang anumang pasubali o hangarin umiwas. Kasayan na nawa ako ng Diyos. Thank you. Congratulations, Representative Arbison. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, uh, I move that Representative Arbison be elected as the chairperson of the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Social Welfare, and as vice person of the Committees on Foreign Affairs, National Defense, Public Works and Highways, and Agrarian Reform. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? 
Chair Hirstan, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I would like to manifest that pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 2 of the New Rules of the Commission, Representative Munir Arbison is deemed member to all standing committees except the Committees on Accounts, Ethics, and Rules and Resolutions. Uh, all right, then. The membership of Representative uh, Arbison to all standing committees except the Committees on Accounts, Ethics, and Rules and resolution, Resolutions is hereby noted. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Foreign Affairs on the nominations and ad interim appointment of three officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on Foreign Affairs is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Senator Panfilo Lacson, be recognized. Senator Panfilo Lacson is hereby recognized. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, this representation as chairman of the Commission on Foreign Affairs presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the nomination of two ambassadors, extraordinary and plenipotentiary, and one foreign service officer class two of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Your committee, after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the public hearing, determined that they are fit and qualified to be in the posts where they are nominated and appointed and therefore ruled to recommend to the plenary their appointments for the consent and approval of this body. Mr. Chairman, it is my honor and privilege to recommend that the committee give its consent or the commission give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Leslie Junio Baja. Our subject nominee joined the Foreign Service in 1986. He consequently served key roles overseas for diplomatic missions in Egypt, Berlin, Germany, Athens, Greece, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein until his recent nomination. During his post as, ambassador, as the ambassador of, to the Arab Republic of Egypt from August to September 2018, he ably assisted about 10,000 Filipinos in the countries under his jurisdiction, particularly in the case of missing seafarers in Eritrea, which reportedly required close coordination with Eritrean authorities. Ambassador Baha also aided in establishing the Philippine presence in Ethiopia for his significant role in the establishment of the Honorary Consulate of the Philippines in Addis Ababa. In 2013, he worked on the passage of the Compensation Act for Human Rights Victims as Ambassadors to Switzerland and Liechtenstein. Mr. Chairman and distinguished colleagues, it is my privilege and honor to recommend that this body give its consent to the appointment of Ambassador Leslie Junio Baja as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Kingdom of Morocco with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Guinea, Republic of Mali, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, and Republic of Senegal with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Plus One. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Chairman, it is likewise my honor and privilege to recommend that the Commission give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Raymond Balatbat as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Lebanese Republic with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class Two. Before his stint at the DFA, our nominee was a legislative researcher and writer who even worked as a budget analyst at the Legislative Budget Research and Monitoring Office from 1992 to 1993. He joined the Foreign Service in 1997 and has since held key roles at the Home Office and overseas, including stints at the Philippine embassies in Jakarta, Indonesia, Riyadh Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Brunei, Darussalam. 
for his various accomplishments and exemplary work in the department, Ambassador Balatbat was confer conferred Gawad Mabini, rank of commander in 2007. Mr. Chairman and distinguished colleagues, it is my privilege and honor to recommend that this body give its consent to the appointment of Ambassador Raymond Balatbat as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Lebanese Republic with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class 2. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Chair hears none. Motion is approved. Mr. Chairman, I also recommend to the Commission on the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Leandro Luis Soliven Manantan to the rank of Foreign Service Officer Class 2. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Chair hears none. Motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lawson. Majority Leader. Oh, by the way, uh, you're missing one member, huh? Senator Lacson, Senator, uh, Senator Tolentino. Where is uh, Congressman Perel? Yes, sir. Ah. The committee boys are uh, locking one member. Boss, uh, present, uh, present po, boss. Possession, ah. <laughs> They're always physically present, huh? Except you now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Next year, boss, how we go, sir? All right, thank you. Majority leader. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if there's uh, no agenda under other matters and uh, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. All right, any objection? Hearing none, the session is hereby adjourned.